Hi everybody, this is Joanne from Joanne Loves Science and from Scientific American at my blog called SciVid over there. And today I want to honor a pioneer in the field of bioinformatics on this Ada Lovelace Day where we do uh, recognize the contributions of famous women scientists. So I'd like you to meet Margaret Dayhoff, who is the mother and father of bioinformatics. I recently taught a graduate level course on the human genome and bioinformatics. When we look at the genomes, it means we're looking at the whole of the DNA sequence to search for patterns and what it codes for and its relevance in helping us know about, know about healthy and diseased states, as well as our relationships to other organisms by comparing our genome to that of other species. With so many letters in a DNA sequence, all those A's, T's, G's and C's, the amount of information can be quite cumbersome. Our poor little brains cannot possibly process this vast amount of data. Computers to the rescue! The area of study that helps us process, store, and analyze all of that data is called bioinformatics. And we're just looking here at a human chromosome and all of the data that we can find out individual genes on this chromosome and then Presumably on this website you could click and learn a lot more about this. So all of this information has been collected into free databases that you are able to access as a member of the general public because you pay taxes. And these databases got their start with Margaret Dayhoff. Bioinformatics is a field that is nearly 50 years old and we can trace the beginnings to Margaret. Dr. Dayhoff was a physical chemist. This means she studied and applied the principles of physics, such as motion and energy, uh, to molecules. But with her background in mathematics and computers, she began to apply those principles to the vast amounts of data that was starting to be collected by scientists. Her first achievement was pioneering work with punch cards and data processing machines to evaluate her area of study in molecular resonance, which means she had some data to show how molecules vibrated. Then, she created a program that helped analyze protein molecular data. In today's terms, the program was incredibly simple, but back then it took her four years from the conception of the idea to the publication of the paper describing the program. As a quick review, most of you know what is called the central dogma of biology. DNA is converted into RNA, which is in turn translated into proteins. Proteins are things that are often called the building blocks of your body, keratin, myosin in your muscles, uh, insulin, and other hormones are considered proteins. Every three letters of DNA or RNA codes for one amino acid, and these amino acids are the smaller building blocks of a larger protein. Amino acids have somewhat long names like leucine, arginine, asparagine, and so on. Scientists became interested in finding the amino acid sequences of proteins. The first one that was figured out was insulin, and that work was done by this gentleman, Frederick Sanger, who won a Nobel Prize for this work. Insulin is this molecule here. Now he didn't figure out the structure, he was just looking at the amino acids, the sequence of the building blocks of the protein. Insulin has a little over 100 amino acids, so to spell out all of those amino acid names took a lot of work and a lot of space on the computer, and even more for much longer sequences. There were three letter abbreviations for the amino acids, and we can see these on the right here. And this was such as LEU for leucine, ARG for arginine, but wouldn't it be much nicer if we could have it down to just one letter, which would take up even less room on the computer. So Margaret Dayhoff's second contribution to bioinformatics was the single letter amino acid abbreviation. And we can see here in the purple is the amino acid sequence of insulin written in the single letter amino acid abbreviation. Dr. Dayhoff began to collect and publish the Atlas of Protein Sequence and Structure books. This project eventually became the basis for the very first database of molecular information called the Protein Information Resource Database of Protein Sequences. Other databases eventually arose, including one that came up about the same time called GenBank, which at that time focused on DNA sequences only. Her original atlas was organized by gene families, 
which help to indicate the evolutionary relationship between the proteins. And that leads us to her fourth contribution to the area of bioinformatics and to this area of understanding evolution. So you have probably seen phylogenetic trees similar to this, and this is how scientists will take a look and see, sort of classify how organisms are related. And early on, we used to only be able to do this by looking at their shape, their characteristics that we could see with, their, with our eyes to see how closely related or further apart something is in relation to each other evolutionarily. But once we had proteins, we were able to take those protein sequences and match them using a very special scoring matrix, one that Margaret Dayhoff had even created herself. And this really changed how we did evolutionary trees like this, these phylogenetic trees. So this is her fourth very major contribution to the area of phylogenetics and using computers and math to help us sort through a lot of biological information. So now that we know what Margaret has contributed, let's do something fun with what she has given us. So we're going to change our name to a DNA sequence. Now we can do this by hand, by using charts and um, you know, just sort of figuring things out for ourselves, or we're also going to find a fun way to use a bioinformatics database to do this. So basically what you're going to want to do is write your name in all capital letters. And I chose Science Goddess, which is my Twitter handle. And using this chart, I was able to say S is serine. And serine has different triplets of DNA that it can match. So for simplicity, I just chose the first one, but it could be any of these. So I chose UCU. Then we can go on to the next letter, C, stands for cysteine, and we can use UGU. So you can see how I did this. So then my name, Science Goddess, looks like UCU, UGU, AUU, etc. in DNA. But this is going to take a bit of time, so why don't we do something else? And we're going to use a free database that's available and actually sort of created for us to have a little fun with Margaret Dayhoff's single letter amino acid abbreviations and the way to match proteins and DNA using some of the statistical methods she figured out. So we can point our browser. Basically all you have to do is type your name right in this box. So we can type anything we want. And so I will just type my full name and I'm going to click decode. And what that's going to do first is to look at that as amino acids. And J actually doesn't have an amino acid that corresponds. And the, I explain that here. Then it tells me what my name in DNA might be. Okay, so it shows my name in DNA. It takes that bit of DNA information and it starts matching it through all of the DNA sequences they have in their database to see what it most similarly matches. So then it says it here is found in a species I've never heard of, but it's a flagellar hook and uh, supposedly. So it says it matches here at the beginning and it matches here at the end. So you can probably type in anything you want in the top and be able to get an amino acid code for it. Thank you for joining me to learn a little bit more about Margaret Dayhoff and her contributions to the field of bioinformatics. And remember, if you have a lot of good computer skills and are willing to learn a little bit of molecular biology, this is a very hot field.